this is Bill Foote and this is business statistics, really business analytics. And the lecture is lecture number one. I am calling it counting the ways. This is in the very first week of a 15 week course for spring 2022 and welcome. We're gonna do five things here twice over. Thing number one is we're gonna pose a question. You can see some uh, interesting uh, pictures over here. We're then gonna form hypotheses about the question. We're gonna get a sample of data. We're actually gonna generate data today. Then we're gonna simply count the ways using a very simple counting principle we're all very familiar with. Uh, we use it in just about every game we play. And then we're gonna infer the plausibility of one of the hypotheses against another, it's relative plausibility. So let's get started. Now normally, when this is done live in a classroom with an audience uh, and everybody is seated around one another, I use an inflatable globe. Here's the globe. And I usually toss it around. So just imagine that as I pose a question. The question is, what is the proportion of water? You know, the blue stuff on the globe, what is the proportion of water on the earth, Mother Earth? Let me write that in. Oh, what's this? So what's the... Proportion, that's a number between It's going to be a number between uh, zero and one, of course. 100% all water, 0% all land. Probably the moon, almost Mars. That's like 99% as far as we know. Methane on other planets. Who knows what's in Pluto? Are we even including in Pluto a, a classification that it's a planet anymore? And then the second thing we're going to do, we're going to form hypothesis about what? about proportions. We're gonna label that P. And these hypotheses will take on percentage values or decimal values. We're gonna use five hypotheses. Zero, 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100%. Now, we know it's not really very plausible, <laughs> just given our experience and looking at this, there is some water, but the earth is also not 100% water. We know this from experience. And that experience is what is called a, a prior. Okay. So we do have prior expectations. And those expectations are based upon things we already know. They're not subjective. They can be, of course, it could be a belief that uh, uh, there is no water on earth, really. It's really flat, yeah, we could do that. But our basic experience and all the science up to this point basically says there is water on earth. There's quite a bit of water. We don't know how much. Is it 50%, 75% water? Is it 25? 25, probably not, but we're not sure. Certainly not zero, certainly not one. We're gonna get a sample. We're actually gonna get a sample. Okay, let's get a sample right now. Use this marker for a sample. So, so suppose we, we toss this around and um, uh, somebody catches the globe. And this is, this is a, uh, we, we believe by the way, in that prior expectation that this is a 
reasonable physical analogical model of of the globe of earth we 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 have taken pictures of this earth from space it's been mapped it is roughly round oblated a little bit if you're celestial me mechanic okay but but uh we we toss this around we're going to toss it around three times and wherever your right thumb lands and suppose the first the first time it lands it lands in water there we go water so our first sample is water we'll just call it w and we toss this again this is how we loosen ourselves up statistically mathematically um intellectually we toss it again and uh uh it lands somebody's uh right thumb lands on well yeah land let me record that over here Okay. And then we toss it again. Okay, we, we just do three tosses because we're just exhausted after all of this. And somebody's right thumb lands again on water. Okay, so we got a sample. Now we have to learn how to count the ways. And we're going to count the ways. So um, if something can happen two ways, and then we repeat the action, and it can happen, let's say, three ways after that, the counting principle is how many total ways can action one and action two occur. Now here our actions are tossing the uh, tossing the uh, the globe around uh, and whether or not we get water or land. But whether we get water or land is something we've hypothetically form so we're going to get into that but if you have two ways that something can happen right followed by three ways for each of those two ways three other things can happen how many total ways one two three, four, five, six ways. Well, the cheap way of doing this, frankly, is just multiply the two ways times the three ways to get six total ways two actions can occur. Okay, well, that's just the basic counting principle. We'll go through it again, but it's basic counting. And then finally, we're going to infer plausibility. Okay, so how do we approach all of this stuff that's here? Well, the easiest way to do this is to, in this particular case, is to create a table. I'm going to start the table with our hypotheses. Well, we have this hypothesis, zero. And the hypothesis we're gonna call P or proportion, but I give it an H just so that we have an idea here. I think it might happen 25%. What is it that, that's happening? Well, we have to refer back to the question, how much water? Not by volume, by proportion. We're gonna make it easy on ourselves. I have no idea what the volume of water is. 
have a rough idea of memory anyways of what the proportion is, but I'm gonna sample. I'm gonna get some data, test my hypotheses. I'm gonna count the different ways in which each hypothesis can occur given all of that data or the other way around, given the data, okay? That's one way. The other way around is given the hypothesis, how many ways could I have collected water? How many ways could I have collected land? How many ways could I have collected water? And it's both water and land and water. Oh, it's gonna be accounting principle again. So here are my hypotheses, building a table. Little mark through the seven there because sometimes my sevens look like ones or twos or who knows what. Nope, nope, that's not even right. And we got this to correct it. And dump that, there we go. But the next one was 50%. Next one was 75%. We're creating a grid of hypothetical proportions. That's what our mind does. We have experience. We see proportions. Um, we see the globe. We pose a question for understanding. It's an intelligible structure. And we're building a heuristic inside of this intelligible structure. Well, if the proportion is zero, and let's say uh, uh, for um, other purposes here, let me stop this share. Let's, let's come over here to the workbench and build a model. Now a model is a, it's not, it's not real in the sense that the globe is real or water is real and land is real. It's a way of thinking, but it's always good to do it tactily with the fingers, okay? And write it all out. I have a bag here. It has a bag of, of of charms in it or marbles or zucchini or you know whatever and we're talking about water and land right well here's land here's the charm for land here's the charm up here a little bit so you can see it's blue for water and i have a bag in here i have a bag what was in here before it's recycled and it's being recycled again now i'm not even going to peek in the bag i am going to say there are four charms in the bag four charms and they're going to be either blue or green standing in for water and land okay simple as that I'll put the two charms there. Let's see. For example, we picked out a we picked out a water the first time, right? A water. And we picked out a land the second time. Finally, this is much, much better in person, by the way. We, we picked out another uh, uh, water. So it's W L W out of the sink. Okay. Now, when I pick it out, I have to put it back in and then take it out again. That's called sampling with replacement. So I took out the water. Put it back. Found a, a land, dropped that back in, and then went back in. 
notice I'm not looking at the bag. How do you know? Well, this is almost like doing a radio show, but, um, oh, another water, okay. Now there's four of these unknown in the bag. It's unknown because we don't know the proportion of land and water, we don't. And we set up a grid, we set up a very clever grid actually. And this is actually a simulation of our idea. So I'm gonna go back and uh, continue to share. And I wanna share that again. Okay, so back to business here. So we have one hypothesis, two hypotheses, the third one, the fourth one, and the fifth one. One of the important things you see about this grid is it's all inclusive. All the possible values of P are bracketed by zero and one, okay? Because that's, that's how we're looking at things, right? And we think that each one can occur, okay? Kind of quiet about that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put another thing here called um, a prior. That can occur one way, that can occur one way, that can occur one way. The hypothesis itself can occur. This is all in my mind, uh, setting it down here on paper, of course. Now, um, let me draw in what uh, zero water looks like from the point of view of the bag of charms. Lucky charms, of course. Zero water, zero proportion water means all land. Now we know that's crazy. <laughs> Why is it great? No, crazy is a bad word. We know that that's not reason. That's a good word. We know that's not reasonable because, well, we have the earth, we know from prior experience that there is some land and some water, okay? But right now we're allowing anything to occur. We're, we're those kind of people. And we can go all the way down to the bottom and put in blue circles here. Blue circles for all water, 100% water. We also know that isn't pretty reasonable either. But we're gonna include it because we wanna be inclusive of all of the possibilities, have everything, as the detectives will say, investigating a crime scene, everything's in the frame. Okay, now what does 25% water look like? Well, it looks like this. One out of four. And if we put over here, water, ah, let me put water there actually. This again is all in our heads. And land, those are the two possibilities, remember. Two different, two different charms. If we put that there, we can begin to think about how many ways water can happen in the first hypothesis. Well, it's gonna be zero ways. Let me write this in black. How many ways can land occur, well, four ways. Remember, this is all up front without even getting any data. This is just step two, not hard to do. And then the second hypothesis, you can have how many waters? One water. How many lands? 
three. So we've created a mental model here based upon some prior experience, based upon an actual question. We've actually collected some data, but we've created a model to represent how we can think about what the whole globe might be look like given an hypothesis and the data jointly. If we bracket ourselves all the way down here, it is four different ways, four different charms in the bag in our hypothesis and for uh, water and zero ways for land. So we can fill in the other two. It's going to make a nice, nice little uh, lower triangular two ways there. Now, why is it two ways? Well, it's 50%. 50% of four is two. 75%. 75% of four marbles in the bag, which is a re representing our hypotheses and representing specifically hypothesis number four, four marbles in the bag, three out of four is 75%. Okay, let's fill in the rest here with green, two and two, three and one. Getting to see a numerical pattern here. In the third hypothesis, it's two. Two what? Two water and two land. In the fourth hypothesis, it's three water and one land. Well, let's Just take a couple of seconds now, record this idea, okay? There's a couple of things going on here. We were asking a question, we posed a question, what is the proportion of water? We formed an hypothesis, actually five hypotheses, with a prior expectation that any one of them can happen. We got a sample, we began to talk about how many ways something can happen. We're going to eventually infer plausibility. Let's take a second and just step back and see what we've done. Well, I hope you had a good break. I certainly did. And this is painstaking, yes, but these five steps are going to be the same five steps that we're going to use throughout the course, 100%, all through the course. We will use some uh, uh, other techniques inside of these, but basically we're going to be forming hypotheses similar to this with a parameter that we want to find, we want to solve for, is it zero, is it 25, 50, 75, or 100%. We're going to put in our prior expectations, and we have finished formulating at this point what each hypothesis means. It means zero water, four ways from this bag that we can get land. All the way down to here, three ways we get water for the fourth hypothesis, and one way we can get land. This is going to be the basic counting principle. And uh, <laughs> that, that pretty much takes care of formulating the hypothesis. Okay, so we've actually gone through only one, and we've done two. We've also gotten a sample, water, land, water. Let me put that down here in our in our grid that we're making. Everything's a table. Tables are very visual. Uh, we like plots and graphs too, but let's never forget a good table with the right motivations inside of it in this case. Uh,
a little bit of color helps. Okay. I'm also going to um, make this a little tidier. There we go. P, just like an algebra problem, P is the unknown proportion. And thus we hype by let P take on one of these values is basically what we have said in formulating the hypothesis. Also, we have said if there are five hypotheses equally spaced, the implication is that there's only four charms that are even allowed in the bag. That's how this also can work when you think about it. Okay, we also notice a pattern of zero to four and four down to zero. Okay. A very important pattern. And now we're finally able to get to pull the sample in. Now the sample is Let's start with water. We have a water sample. Make that blue. I like the blue for the water. Do that for the water. And now we ask the question, given hypothesis number one, given hypothesis number one, how many ways can blue occur? Well, we already know the answer to that. It's right here. Zero ways. Given hypothesis two, how many ways can blue occur? Well, we know it's one. I mean, all we have to do is read this. We've already done the hard work. Next one is two. The next one after that is three. And the next one after that four. It turns out that all of this thinking is just counting, lining it up. Yeah, we got to line it up carefully. Got to think about that. The order matters. I mean, I can mix this up in terms of uh, one, three, two, four, five, five, three, four. Two. I could put this random. It won't matter over here to the right. Okay. Just watch what happens. So we have our prior is one can actually draw a graph here. It's, got, it's gonna actually be a little bit helpful to do that. We have one observation. We pulled one out of the bag, one charm out of the bag. Put this up here for a second. Let's, let's graph this idea. Introduce another piece of jargon in the business called a density. Density is just the number of ways. Sometimes the number of relative ways out of the total ways, how many ways relative to every, okay. Density, get the idea. Like a population variable. How many people are in the Bronx? So we have density over here. My hand shakes, it's cold here in the Bronx today. And we can see that the density can go from zero one, two, three, four. And if we have down here on the on the horizontal as axis, uh, used to be called the abscissa. I like the old terms. We have hypothesis one, which is what? Zero, two, 25. I usually like to put a zero in front of the decimal place. Third hypothesis is 0 0.5 zero. The fourth hypothesis is 0 0.75. Extend this line just a little bit more. And finally, we've got 1.0. Okay. 
So I'm going to label that P for proportion. And we kind of start here on this graph and make a dashed line. Uh, let's start here. Let's just do it this way. They originally think it's one. Okay. You could choose any number actually between any number. But one is very apropos because it's going to anything times one. I guess just remember this anything times one is itself. Okay, fine. Right. And now we've collected one piece of data. So this is sample number one. And this is painstaking and it's laborious, I know. Okay, we live in spatial temporal uh, beings, so it's going to be painstaking. So let's map this line, okay, the zero. Uh, let me use a, another color like orange, it's pretty good. Uh, maybe red is a little better. Okay. It's the first one. So it's from here. And then 25 is one. You can connect that if you want. And it look relatively continuous. 50 is two. This will be a straight line through this. It's linear. 75 is what? Three. Very good. I'm hearing you out there. I can hear you. Share your thoughts. And one is four. Okay. Now we can make this prettier and an absolute straight line. Okay. But that's that's the blue. instance that's the way blue can occur you already figured that out and did that hard work already our prior expectation was at one but now we get this now we're going to add another another sample okay sample number two that should be sample number one Sample number two is linear. Right? Is that true? Always check your work. Yes, land W L W. Okay, good. So yeah, it was land. I'm checking it here. So this is number one, number two, number three. Number three, you see where the X is? The X is on, oh, the United States. Okay. So we just read over from here, 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 here. There are four ways under hypothesis number one. This is, this is gonna introduce the notion of conditioning. We have data. How many ways can data occur? a green data, a green charm, land, occur, given, conditional on, if, all of those are equivalent statements, if the hypothesis is P equals zero, which is equivalent here to four charms of four ways. Uh, put it black here, and then three ways, two ways, one way, zero ways. Well, now we, we can use our counting principle if we want, or uh, you also want to map this over here once again. Uh, 
where we have a zero. Zero point two five. And say doing this by paper and pencil. Uh, you probably won't fall asleep doing it. It's too much going on in your brain. Proprioception. Eye hand coordination. And it's cold, so I'm wobbling here a bit. And here is one. Here is zero. Two, three, and four. Okay. And um, use that one again. Prior expectation is this lovely dashed line. Now we're going to be able to do all this in Excel, like once we get it down, once we get it encoded. One, two, three. Okay. So, yeah, okay. Now, zero is four times. So um, let me, I should have made this blue. Blue, okay. Okay, zero is four times. 25% of the time, three times three ways in which we could have picked water under that hypothesis. I don't know. We got to remember, I don't know what's in the bag. You don't either. I really don't. I asked my wife to put stuff in the bag. So that's what's in there. Whatever's in there is in there. I said there has to be at least one of each in there. Okay, that's that was the only rule because our prior expectation is that there is some land and there is some water. Okay, there we go. The proportion of of, of of water exists. That's what the one indicates to us. All right, what else do we have here? Ah, three, two, one. Notice it's another straight line all the way down to zero. And let's use green for this. Pretty good. Okay. Now, counting principle comes in here. How many ways can we see these two? Okay, now so far we have two. I know we, we, we picked a third. Just hold on a moment. I'll say we, we actually did sample number one and then we updated it. And so what does the update give us? Well, if there are zero ways of getting water, and four ways of getting land under hypothesis number one. The total number of ways of, remember, we're asking about water. The total number of ways is zero ways times four. Zero ways. Let's count the ways by the counting principle. I didn't say accounting, I said counting. Yeah. There we go. There's zero ways. What's the next one? One way of getting blue, three ways of getting green by the counting principle. And just pop that crown counting principle over here. One way. Blue. And then we drew after that. So that's draw number one. Draw number two, three ways. So from a counting point of view, we have one times three equals three. Well, that's obvious, okay? We have one, two, 
three. Okay, fine. One way. So there are three ways of getting hypothesis number two with this data. What about the next one? Well, keep believing this counting principle, it's two times two, four ways. And again, if you keep believing this, well, this why wouldn't you believe it? It's logical. It is necessarily true given the arithmetic and given the counting, given the table and our way of thinking, and given that three times one, at least since third grade, is always going to be three. And then given four times zero is always going to be zero. Let's do this four times. Oh, that didn't all the way come out. So these are the total ways. Zero ways, three ways, four ways, three ways, zero ways. Beautifully symmetric. And it's the same thing as doing this over here. All we did was we took zero times four, one times two. We took zero times, we took zero times four. We multiplied these two graphs together. And what do we come up with when we multiply them together? Well, we get a third graph, right? The zero three four three zero graph. Let's try that out. It's counting principle up here for later use, perhaps. Erase that. Create a new graph. Multiply these two graphs together. Okay, so far we have uh, three, four, three. So we're gonna go from zero to four again. One, two, three, four. I said it would be counting and that's all we're doing. Don't ever forget the x-axis of zero. 0 0.25, 0 0.5. Is this like watching paint peel? Maybe. This first time out, you really, really do yourself a great favor by following it very carefully and painstakingly. Okay, so we have our prior right here. And if we use just water, we have this number of ways. And that's called a posterior, just with water. And if we were to use just just land, which should be green, there we go, there we go, there we go, that's land, we would have a different posterior. Okay, our prior was this, and now we're coming up with ways that we will call posterior ways. As opposed to prior. They're after we applied an hypothesis to the data. We said, given this hypothesis, what is the data set? How many ways? Okay. And if we plot this, here's our prior. Our posterior, and I'm just going to do a little um, uh, 
by taking this times. And I owe all of this, by the way, this particular part of the exposition to um, two people, Arnold Zellner from University of Chicago, early 70s, and more recently, Richard McElreath out of Map Leipzig in, uh, in Germany uh, uh, for this kind of an exposition. I find as I get older, I'm using things that I learned from a lot of other people, and hopefully a little bit different way. So it's like taking this positive ramp and multiplying it times this negative ramp. Uh, there's a whole way of doing this to create portfolios in finance. Yeah, okay, there we go. Mark did that. Uh, anyways, keep learning things, keep using things. What does this one map out to, though? There. Orange for that. It starts off at zero. Why? Because zero times four. And four times zero are going to give us zero, right? Okay. It's going to be zero. It's going to end with zero, too. 25% of the time, it's going to be one times three. There we go. 50% of the time, it's going to be, what, two times two. Seventy-five percent of the time, it's going to be uh, three times one. And if we connect these, these dots, now I'm definitely going to use just orange for this. We have a logic map, a logic graph. This is logic. If this, then that. Okay. And it maps all of the different possibilities we've given ourselves. Okay. In fact, this is a quadratic. <laughs> if, if we had, oh, used a complete continuous line in between zero and one and say, divided it up equally into uh, a thousand, thousand and one different pieces, then this would look just like a quadratic, whereas these originally are linear. So that's kind of interesting. We just shaped our hypotheses with data. Incredible. Data does that to us. It changes the way we think. Yes. Right in line with about 2,000, 3,000 years of reasoning about reasoning. Okay, fine. All right, fine. Now, what would happen if we added a third? Well, we can take what we had before, and we added a third, and it's water. Remember, the third one was, ah, uh, there it is. Water, you can barely see that. Okay, it's water. Okay. Third sample is going to be water. Let me add that. Let's see what happens then. So we can take this graph and multiply it by water, which will be this third sample. Okay. Well, let's do the counting first. So we're going to do what is called updating. And this is a desirable thing because we could be tossing this globe around all day, all night. In fact, we can simulate that toss very, very easily in Excel. And we will do that in another session. I want to get through this one because all the pieces are here. All five steps that we're going to use all semester are going to be here. So let's finish this part of the job. Pat ourselves on the back that we've done something kind of interesting here. Okay, so we're going to add water.
and we're going to take the prior number of rays, which is zero, and multiply it by water, which is zero. So this is the update. Did two, did one, linear. We did two. Looks like a looks like you're throwing a ball up in the air and it's coming back down. Uh, by the way, real physicists know that that's an ellipse, but okay, we we play games with that one. Uh, all right. Okay, now we have an update. We have three from before, and the water is one. How do we know that? We just over here, or we look at the one blue out of four over here. Over here. And we have four from before, and then we update it with a blue. It's two ways, because it's two blue and two green. That's eight. Oh, things are getting a little bit more interesting here. Squeeze in, squeeze up. Okay. Now, the interesting thing is the area under the curve is going to be the same as we go forward when we do one more trick, but we're not there yet. Uh, three times three. Oh my goodness, we hit nine. And finally, zero times four. Zero. Uh, I may have done this one wrong. No, I did it right. That's great. Zero times four ways now. Four ways. Four ways. I'm just checking myself. Okay. So now we have the total number of ways. Let's map this one. Look, let's look at what this graph looks like. Aren't you absolutely fascinated by this? There we go. So we multiply this times another water zero one two three four well i got to get up to nine right i have to go from there to nine so let me go back and revise this. I'm going to keep zero. Get rid of these guys. We had zero. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. We got to fit nine in there. Okay, that's just going to crowd things out a little bit. And notice uh, this is a uh, whiteboard session that you would have with your project team explaining what's going on into a, a client that really is greedy for information. And it's willing to sit for an hour to figure it out with you. You go from zero percent here to uh, you're a captive audience so you want to be here right you are going to get one of the most powerful techniques that i can imagine and it is all logical if arithmetic can be uh, it is a logic and arithmetic this is all logical it's a logical process it's called a hypothetical objective process officially it's got an official name so we know it's going to be zero use orange again watch this ball go up the next one is three the next one point five is eight it's going to pop up look at what's happening here there's a bend Remember, logic, 
Then we get to 75, that's nine, that's way up here. starts to come back down and well it's going to drop right down to zero isn't it it's going to fall like a like the rock that it is now that's a very different shape and we're going to see this shape and you may already know what this shape is going to eventually look like it's going to be called the normal curve especially this bend in and if you add more you'll find that if you have more hypotheses, you'll find that that right-hand side will bend in. It'll also oh, bend in a little bit more with more data. Right now, the data, if you were asked, if you just took the sample right now, what is the proportion of, of uh, water? You would have to say, oh, two out of three, two-thirds, right? We have two waters, one land free observations. The raw way of thinking about it is very close to the wrong way of thinking about it is P equals, because it's not necessarily true, P equals 0.67. Okay. What are we getting here? What's the most plausible way? It's this one. This one. Number four, it is 75% is now the most plausible way with this data and this setup. We're gonna do one more thing, call it quits, because we're gonna need a little bit of a breather in order to come back and put this into Excel. It'll be very easy to do, it's counting, and then we can, call it quits. So I'm going to show you one more trick um, with in Excel. I'm not going to show you here. But the last thing I want to do, I want to get to something called a plausibility. Plausibility will be an index number between 0 and 1 such that We can directly compare one hypothesis with another. A direct comparison across even groups of different hypotheses. We might have I might have, we might have another another crew tossing the globe. How do we compare their plausibilities? And we might have tossed it eight times there or six times there. Or we might update it. How do we compare one with the other? And the way we do that is we use a process called normalization. So we introduce density. And now we're going to normalize it. And this allows us the desired result here is we're going to be able to do compare. Now, if you're an accountant, this is called common size balance sheets, income statements, and so on common size. Everything's in terms of percent of assets, for example, percent of liabilities plus net worth, for example. So we can compare a large company with a small company. Here we can compare with large sample sizes to small sample sizes. It's all about plausibility. And if we do that, we add these up down here, and I think it adds up to 20. So Zero out of 20 is plausibility index zero. And plausibility is probability. Okay. Three out of 20. Fifteen percent. It basically says 15 with a probability of 15 percent. Hypothesis two, given the data. Will occur 15% of the of the time. That's one way to think about it. Don't want to get into frequentist land yet. Okay, eight out of 20. We all know that's 40%. And uh, nine out of 20, we know that's that's going up a little bit. 
45%. And 0 out of 20 again is 0. Okay, so things are colliding here. Worlds are colliding. So we're going to put this on a different scale over here. A 0 to 1 scale for common size. The thing is, the most plausible is 75. But it is possible to have a 25. Possible to have, now it's impossible to have zero. And impossible to have one. That is what zero means. It is certainly not zero. Certainly not one. Could be 75. That's, the, again, the most probable. Uh, could, but it could also be 50, could also be 25. And this is what our analysis does. It uses the entire distribution to have the discussion about, what are we doing now? What are we doing? What are we doing? Let's get back up here. What is the proportion of water? So far, what we have found is it could be any one of these, but this is a pretty strong candidate. That's how we talk about it. So I'm going to leave you with this. And our next step is to put this into a spreadsheet that will be considerably shorter in time. Stay tuned. Thank you very much for your kind attention.